Batch Invoices is a quick way of entering invoice information into your accounts. There are limitations, for example, batch invoices can't be printed or emailed from the software and they don't link to your products and services list, meaning they don't adjust any stock levels. However, if you don't require these options, for example, you might handwrite your invoices when on site with your customer, then batch invoices is a quick and simple way to record an invoice against the customer in your accounts. This enables you to keep track of your customers, how much they owe, how much they spend, and also how long invoices have been outstanding for. In this example, we're already in the customers list and from the toolbar, you click batch invoice. The first step is to select which customer you want to enter the invoice for. You can either type in the account reference or as we're doing, you can select them from the list. The date is picked up automatically. However, this can be changed if required. The due date is also calculated automatically. This is based on the invoice date plus the payment terms entered within the customer record we've selected. You would normally enter the invoice number into the reference column. So if you have been handwriting your invoices and you've got this on your stationery, then just enter it into the reference column. The XREF provides an extra field for an extra reference. You can leave this blank if required. However, it's quite common to use this for some sort of internal filing system reference. The nominal code defaults to the one that's set within the customer record. However, this can be changed if required. If required, you can type in a different nominal code or select one from the list. We'll just leave our set as the default, 4000. The department is also picked up from within the customer record. However, this can be changed if required. In this example, we'll ignore the project reference and then we'll enter some details. So in this case, services. You then enter the net amount. You then choose the appropriate tax code. The default is picked up from the customer record and you should note that if you want registered for VAT, then you should enter the gross value of the invoice into the net column and set the tax code to T9. As you can see, the VAT amount calculates automatically. If the invoice has already been paid at this point, then you can actually fill in the details. All you need to do is enter the amount paid, enter the date of the payment, choose the bank that the money was paid into, and then enter a reference. Obviously this could be a check number, you might put, type in the word cash. In this case, we've entered the word card. At this point, we can then tab down to the next line and continue entering additional invoices. Alternatively, the invoice that we have entered we might break it down into a number of different lines. For example, if we needed to split the values between different nominal codes or tax codes. In this case, we're just gonna keep it really simple with the one item. So we'll just click save. That's how easy it is to post a batch invoice against your customer. Entering credits is really similar. And also entering batch supplier invoices and credits against suppliers is also very similar.